but you know I will return someday. So fare thee well, my own true love, and when I return united we will be. It's not the leaving of Liverpool that grieves me, but my darling when I think on thee. Well, I've sailed a Yankee sailing ship, Davy Crockett is her name, and Burgess is her captain, and a floating hell is she, everyone now. So fare thee well, my own true love, and when I return united we will be. It's not the leaving of Liverpool that grieves me, but my darling when I think on thee. Well, the harbour light is fading, love, and I wish, I wish I could remain. For it will be some time, you know, my dear, till I see you again. Everyone, so fare thee well, my own true love, and when I return united we will be. It's not the leaving of Liverpool that grieves me, but my darling when I think of thee. So farewell to you, my own true love. Yes, I'm going far, far away. Well, I'm bound for California, and you know I will return someday, everyone. So fare thee well, my own true love, and when I return united we will be. It's not the leaving of Liverpool that grieves me, but my darling when I think of thee again. So fare thee well, my own true love, and when I return united we will be. It's not the leaving of Liverpool that grieves me, but my darling when I think on the Thank you. Here's a quieter one. you but there's something I really have to say you look at me with eyes of sorrow but you know you don't have to run away from me and do don't you know I need you with me can't you see that we always should be by throwing away your heartaches to the winds? You know you don't have to run away from me. Yes, peace is hard to find these days. And the sun is always crying at the rain. And deep inside you a light, it flickers out. God, you know you don't have to run away from me. And do, don't you know I need you with me? Can't you see that we always should be? By throwing away your heart is to the wind. You know you don't have to run away from me. So really 
relax and tell me that you love me cause you know that you mean it deep inside and don't go away and forget you ever met me you know you can't really run away from me and do don't you know I need you with me can you see that we always should be by throwing away our hearties to the wind you know you don't have to run away from me and do don't you know I need you with me can you see that we always should be by throwing away is to the wind you know you don't have to run away from me you know you don't have to run away from me you know you don't have to run away from me Another one you all know, it's a, it's a quiet one, but John Denver song. All my bags are packed and I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. I hate to wake you up to say goodbye. The dawn is breaking, it's early morn The taxi's waiting, he's blowing his horn Already I'm so lonesome I could cry So kiss me and smile for me Tell me that you'll wait for me Hold me like you never let me go Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane Don't know when I'll be back again Oh, babe, I hate to go There's so many times I've played around There's so many times I've let you down Well, I tell you now They don't mean a thing Every place I go, I think of you Every song I sing, I sing for you When I come back, I'll wear your wedding ring So kiss me and smile for me Tell me that you wait for me Hold me like you never let me go Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane Don't know when I'll be back again Oh babe, I hate to go Now the time has come to leave One more time, just let me kiss you And close your eyes, I'll be on my way be on my way dream about the days to come when I won't have to leave or run about the times well I won't have to say kiss me and smile for me tell me that you wait for me hold me like you never let me go 
Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane Don't know when I'll be back again Oh, babe, I hate to go Here's, here's a, a wee Scottish song. Fighting is over to the land Oh, my cloud that I left to be a soldier I will go, I will go I've a buckle on my belt A sword in my scabbard And a red coat on my back And a shilling in my pocket I will go, I will go I will go, I will go, when the fighting is over to the land of oh, my cloud that I left to be a soldier, I will go, I will go. When the king's son came along, he called us all together, saying proud Eland men, well, you begged for my feather, I will go, I will go, I will go, I will go, when the fighting is over to the land, oh, my cloud, that I left to be a soldier, I will go, I will go. They are ablaze. The houses are there are burning. The children are at war. To the scales are there are learning. I will go. I will go. Everyone now. I will go. I will go. When the fighting is over to the land. Oh, my cloud that I left to be a soldier. I will go. I will go. I will go, I will go, and the fighting is over to the land. Oh, my cloud, that I left to be a soldier, I will go, I will go, I will go, I will go. Here's another good Scots song you'll all know. This is the last one. Before we, have our, before we have our guest on. I want everybody to join in too. This is a super song. It makes you feel proud. stood against him. Proud Edward's army and sent him home to think again. The hills are bare now and autumn leaves are like back and still or land that is lost now which 
to those so dearly held and stood against him. Proud Edward's army, lovely, and sent him home on think again. These days are past now, and in the past they must remain. But we can still rise now and be the nation again that stood against him. Proud Edward's army and sent him home or to think again. O oh, plural Scotland, when will we see your likes again? That fought and died for your wee hill and glen and stood against him. Proud Edward's army and sent him home or did think again. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, that was Jim Watson and Alan Sprozer. Um, if any of you are in the town on a Wednesday night, you're probably not as behind me as there. Notice here that says the White Heather show in the town hall. This is Billy Anderson, who used to be with the White Heather dancers. He plays the accordion, he's not one of the dancers. And he got this White Heather show. And Jim and Alan are part of the White Heather show. <coughs> um, our guest of the evening is quite a character in his own right. He's an uh, uncommon king of the Glasgow Barrows. He goes round there, everybody knows him. And we were talking earlier the night, about a year ago I was in Glasgow and the three of us walking around the barrows and a bloke said, oh I know you, you're this stall and he said, you're the islanders, well Danny's the same height as me, you know and Jim Craig of the islanders is out here somewhere and Danny said, no, we are the Danny Carl folk four, there's only three of us and the bloke says, oh I've seen you, I've seen you so this gun that you're about to see insisted in giving the bloke his autograph as the Danny Kyle Folk Four. Tonight he's on his own. Well, you welcome back to St Andrews, Danny Kyle. <laughs> oh, I can see right doing your dress. I don't agree with plunging night lines, in fact I look down on them. Uh, first of all, I must apologise to the organisers tonight for turning up a wee bit late. But what actually happened was that my car broke down, so I flagged down this motorist and I says, look I've broken down, could you look at my engine? The bloke said, I'm sorry I'm not a mechanic, I'm a chiropodist. I said, well could you geese a toe? <laughs> geese a toe. <laughs> uh, uh, my, my hometown is uh, Paisley, although I don't advertise that fact very often. Oh, there's another one, is there? Oh, I. oh that's two there, no. Yeah, see the drunk ones. Anyway, the reason I don't advertise it is I was in Belfast about four months ago, and the guy says, where are you from? And I said, I'm a Paisley man, and I get my head kicked in. <laughs> so just gonna... Had a wee bit of sad news tonight, I just heard there's a new riot started in Belfast. You had two lesbians fighting over a rubber bullet. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so, 
What I decided to do tonight was I decided to hitchhike through and I was walking down the road and I saw this guy stealing a hedge. I never said that in case he took offence. But uh, <laughs> so, then, so then I decided what I would do. I would I would fly through. So I got the I got the plane uh, to Lookers. Actually, the plane that they offered me was so old that an outside toilet in it, and <laughs> and a seagull flew into it through the back, and it was terrible. And we arrived. We got hijacked to Inverness. And we arrived in Inverness, half past four, the bar was shut, the restaurant was shut, and this big American says, gee, this must be the arch hole of the world. And the reporter said, oh, you're just passing through. So, uh, the, the song I'd like to start off is an agricultural seduction ballad for the Gorbals. Uh, in Glasgow, they call it a fur coat and knee knicker song. Uh, the story of this song is two girls that leave Glasgow and go to the Holy Loch and pick up two American sailors and one of the sailors takes one of the lasses down an alleyway and he says, okay, honey, you're going to get something you've never had before. She says, hey, my girl, this one's got leprosy. So, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I learned this. This was an American folk song originally until I came to Glasgow and got folked up. And <laughs> and I learned this song of one of Scotland's most famous folk groups, Hamish Imlach. And Hamish at the moment tips the scales, not so much tips them as bribes them at 24 stone. And according to his weight chart, it should be 12 feet 8. And <laughs> It actually works for his wife, she's got to stand up in bed to see if it's morning. But, uh, <laughs> I got off a drunk at Aberfeldy Festival a couple of weeks ago and I thought I saw a pink elephant but it was Hamish streaking. Anyway. <laughs> the song is dedicated to Mary Whitehouse. Must be terrible for that woman going about the world with a neighbour in the toilet. Her and her pal, Lord Long for it. <laughs> well, a rich girl, she rides in a big fast Cadillac. When a poor girl, she tries to do the same. My girl, she ain't got no big fast Cadillac, but she gets there just the same. Yeah, she gets there just the same. Rich girl, she wears those fancy French perfumes, and a poor girl, she tries to do the same. My girl, she ain't got no perfume at all, but you can smell her just the same. You can smell her just the same. Rich girl, she wears a camel hair coat. Tommy Camels. <laughs> Monko Willie joined the Foreign Legion. That's where he got to forget. And my Uncle Huey joined the British Legion, that's where he got to remember. And, <laughs> and the first job he got was driving a busload of nuns through the desert. So before he left the fort, he had 24 pints of Guinness, 24 pints of lager and two and a half tonne of cabbage. And he was driving to, and he was bursting for a pee. And the desert was completely flat, there was no sand hills, no cactus, nothing. It was like a wimpy's building site, just sand as far as you could see. And all these nuns were sit, sitting in the back of the lorry trying to kick your habit. And, <laughs> and he saw this wee dot, so he stopped the lorry and, and ran up to the wee dot, and it turned out to be a wee Arab on a camel. And he says, hello, Mr. Arab, could you give me 24 black horses with white saddles and 24 white horses with black saddles? And I want the black horses to have white manes and the white horses to have black manes. And I want the black horses to have white legs and the white horses to have black legs. And I want the black horses. And the Arab says, hold on a minute. <laughs> he was a Glasgow Arab. He said, <laughs> you want 24 black tails with white legs, no that's wrong. You want 24 white manes with black tails, no that's wrong. You want 20, are you peeing up against my leg? <laughs> and, <laughs> 24 years he's in the Foreign Legion, and in these 24 he's, four years he hadn't even seen a lassie. This is ridiculous, 24 years without a woman, even a camel's are beginning to look attractive. And all the officers are dancing chic to chic. 
and I'm fed up. So, he deserted in the desert, and the first person he met was this Masonic Arab called Sheikh Mahon. And <laughs> then he met this officer, and the two of them were walking through the desert, and this wee Arab boy came up and says, Hello, would you like to buy my sister? And the officer says, Go away, I'm English. He says, Oh, would you like to buy my brother? <laughs> so, is there any here from England tonight, by the way? Welcome to Britain. <laughs> Never play casual in English, and every time you play the Queen, he stands up. Anyway, so, he was crawling through the desert. I ain't trouble up at my last. Anyway, so he's crawling through the desert. He's crawling through the desert, and he's saying, water, water, water. And this guy ran past him with bathing trunks on, and a towel over his arm. He said, I don't know the water, but it's some beach. And <laughs> then he meets this lassie buried, buried up to her neck in sand, and she says, can you help me? The Ar Arabs have been torturing me. He said, what's in it for me? She said, sand. And... <laughs> <laughs> she, says you, she says you better bring a big shovel, I've got a horse underneath me. <laughs> could you hear me in there? Because I could hear you. <laughs> anyway. And, and so, <laughs> so he crawls on a bit. And he meets these two soldiers, and one of them says, God, this is terrible, this desert, this desert sun, I'm roasting, what's today's day? It says 24th August. He said, it's the day of the air races. So I know they've got some day for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, he sees this ice cream van. It's not a busy desert, this, you know, he sees this ice cream <laughs> He sees this ice cream van, and it's a masochist ice cream van, because it's called Mr. Whippy. And, <laughs> And a wee tune that plays at I Love Alashi. So, <laughs> going to laugh again, it's Leonard Bell for Shiver's Jellies. Anyway, so, he crawls up to, uh, and he gets a throw up in the cone, but it's a mirage, and he gets a big mouthful of sand. Then he sees this pool of water, and he dives into it, and it's another mirage, and he gets another mouthful of sand. And then he sees this Eskimo pass, with icicles hanging from his beard, and the sledge dog, and the hussy's going mush, mush. And he says, can you help me? I'm lost. And the Eskimo says, you're lost. So, <laughs> he crawls. <laughs> he crawls on a bit and he sees this wee dot and he crawls up to it and it's an Arab with a wet leg no it's actually <laughs> it's actually this Arab girl and he said at last a woman after 24 years and he pulls her veil off and here it's another foreign legionnaire with a big beard he says you dirty rotten swine have a good mind to let you go In my prison cell I sit with my raincoat in the shade And the shadow of my nose is on the walls And the ladies as they pass put their fingers in my ear And the bugs are playing billiards with my feet Ball of yarn, ball of yarn Won't you be my little ball of yarn Ball of yarn, ball of yarn won't you be my little ball of yarn? The last bit of the song is dedicated to my granny. Granny, this song's just for you. <laughs> she's not dead, she's up on the roof stripping lead. <laughs> Has anybody seen my granny? She's in the kitchen, can't you smell her bacon biscuits on a damned old dirty stove? In her eye there is some matter, it keeps dripping in the batter And she whistles as it ran down her nose Oh, as it ran down her nose, he gaggles, oh, ran down her nose And she whistles as it ran down her nose Thank you. I'd like you to try this chorus with me, please. Very easy. Soap, soap, soap. That's what we sing. Soap, soap, soap. Sing! Soap, 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 soap. Well, 
thank you very much for the issue bars of soap. But, uh, anyway, this is a weed. This is a wee drinking song for wee drinkers. The song is dedicated to my Uncle Willie, who is what you call a constipated alcoholic. He can't pass a pub. And <laughs> Monko Willie, Monko Willie had arthritis in his hip for putting wet change in his pocket. And <laughs> he was once stopped by the police for drunken driving, and the police said, Would you blow into this bag, sir? She's with some matter, your chips warm. <laughs> and he says, What is it anyway? The police said, It's just a wee bag, it tells you how much you've had to drink. It's like a married one of them. So. <laughs> He once read an advert in a paper that says Drink Canada Dry, so he emigrated. <laughs> he did, and he came back home, and he had that much drinking him come back home, they had to buy, pay duty on him to get him back into the country. And he was a hell of a drinker, you know. They cremated him about four weeks ago, and he had that much whiskey in him, it took them four hours to get the fire out. And awful drinker. Anyway, the songs of my favourite pub in Paisley called Katie Hearts which is, uh, unfortunately, it's gone now. But it, was, it used to be a great pub, you know. It used to serve your apprenticeship drinking in this pub, you know. You used to go in with, sort of four-year-old, you go in with the empties and he'd say, what you want, a drink or the money? And, uh, <laughs> great pub, you know. I can remember, like, he did it up one night, and we went in, and it was sort of lovely carpets, but the carpets were covered in sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> I says, uh, what's the sawdust for? He says, that's no sawdust, that was last night's furniture. <laughs> and, there's a pub in, I've, oh, by the way, and it's for Paisley, I've changed the name for New Street to, if you story street in New Street, just for sort of poetic license. And, and libel, you know. There's a pub in Paisley's New Street where the cider's always too sweet and the wine's so cheap it's sold in polythene bags. You get, Philip thought a polythene bag was a Greek prostitute. <laughs> it's one for the scholars. Or you get the Glasgow prostitute that got her appendix out and told the doctor to leave his stitches in so she could make some money on the side. <laughs> you can always you can always tell a Glasgow prostitute she's the one with the handlebars sticking out her hips. You know, Oh, you get the woman travelling, you get the woman travelling through Blythewood Square on a Saturday night with a wee boy in this taxi, and all the lashes are stolen across course, and wholesaler, and they're driving through, and it, the wee boy says, Mum, what are these women? She says, oh, they're, um, <coughs> they're sailor's son, uh, they're sailor's wife's waiting, and her husband's coming home. And the taxi driver says, for God's sake, the boy's about ten year old, tell him the truth, they're called prostitutes, son. He's old enough to know now, Mrs. They're prostitutes. So about ten minutes later, the wee boy says, Mum, can prostitutes have babies? She said, sure, son, where do you think all the taxi drivers came from? <laughs> And the wine's so cheap it's sold in polythene bags And the customers it fetches are best described as wretches For they're always poncing pints and tapping fags Katie Hart's the owner's name, it's in Paisley's Hall of Fame But he throws food tabs at the board instead of darts Customers come from overseas and almost everyone agrees that there'll never be a pub like Katie Hart's. My Uncle Willie was standing in Katie Hart's one night with his wee Pekingese dog from Pekingese and he was standing there full of Guinness and cabbage and this guy came in and went boo and he was sick all over my Uncle Willie's dog. <laughs> and he looked down and he says, by God, I don't remember eating that. <laughs> and... <laughs> and He came home one morning, about four o'clock in the morning, and he says, Maggie, you gonna let us in? She's away back to your pals, you're not getting in here. He says, go on, let us in. She says, no, the pals are good enough to stay out this time. Says, go on, stay out. We, we bloody and drink with all your pals, you know. He says, if I bring up two fish suppers and a bottle of wine, will you let me in? She's like, okay. He goes, <laughs> and, 
أن أن He was, he was standing in Katie Hart's one night, and this, this big blonde came in, big sort of svelte blonde, and she says, hello, Monka Wally, Monka Wally says, hello. <laughs> she says, would you like a drink? He said, sir. Must be a draftsman. She said, she says, would you like a drink? He said, serpently. I'll have a glass of cheap wine and a pint of scrump. So all night long she throws drink into his wee body and at the end of the night she says, would you like to come home with me? He said, sure thing, baby. A real silver tongue devil he was, you know. And she takes him outside to this big chauffeur driven Rolls Royce and drives up to this big mansion up in the hills and opens a crate of champagne and says, you may drink that while I slip into something a little more comfortable. So in about two seconds, flat Monka Willie's down to his string vest and bonnet and one bottle of champagne going, <laughs> And the voice in the bedroom says, you can come in now. So he hoovers into the bedroom. <laughs> Think about that one. And there's this big Canadian lumberjack there, grabs him and rapes him for four and a half hours and throws him out. So he's back in the pub the next day telling all his pals and she comes in again, she says, hello. <laughs> he says, hi, hello. She buys him drink all night again and she says, would you like to come home with me? He says, is that big lumberjack going to be there? She says, no, not tonight. He says, well, I'm not coming. <laughs> There's a girl called Plucky Lorna sitting over in the corner, and you must admit she's no Diana Dors. With her legs upon the table, she thinks she's Betty Grable, but she wears an army bell around her drawers. Katie Hart's the owner's name at St Paisley's Hall of Fame where he throws food tabs at the board instead of darts. Customers come from overseas and almost everyone agrees that there'll never be a pub like Katie Hart's. They're getting a drinking competition with this big Englishman and they got the 48 pints and the big Englishman says, I'll have to go to the toilet. So, is that a good accent? Not bad, thank you, thank you. So, while he's away at the toilet, my uncle Willie drank the 50 pints that are on the table. And they got to 150 pints. <laughs> Usually thinks he's pal way at me, act his lookout. Anyway, and they got to 150 pints, and the big Englishman says, I'll have to go to the toilet. So, while he's away at the toilet, my uncle Willie drinks the 300 pints that are on the table. And they get to 3,942 pints. This isn't a true story, actually, but they get to 3,000. <laughs> 942 pints and the big Englishman says a lot and he collapses in a puddle on the floor <laughs> and while he's lying unconscious Monko Willie drinks the 5,000 pints that are on the table staggers outside and starts to unbutton his trousers and the policeman goes up and says just a minute you can't do the toilet here and she says I'm not going to do it here I'm going to do it a wee 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 <laughs> And anyone will tell you that the meat pies that they sell you have been lying on the shelf for 40 years. And the meat and fungus fillings twice as strong as penicillin, and the taste resembles wax from poisoned ears. Katie Hart's the owner's name at St Paisley's Hall of Fame, where he throws food towels at the board instead of darts. Customers come from overseas and almost everyone agrees that they'll never be a pop like Katie Hart. Thank you. This next song is dedicated to the South African government who last year made great progress towards the, bro the brotherhood of man. They actually allowed Negroes into the sporting events. Unfortunately, they only allowed them into two events, catch a javelin and head the pup. So. <laughs> I don't know if you, but I've sad news tonight. Just heard that President Nixon has phoned up dial a prayer and then they've hung up on them. So. <laughs> The 
story I'm gonna sing you People, you know it's true If you're black and go to work for a living This is what to say to you Do see, if you're white, you're all right Or if you're brown, stick around But if you're black, oh brother Get back, get back, get back, that's your butt I went into this bar the other night And they was having fun They was drinking beer and wine But they would not serve me none They said, if you're white, you're all right Well, let's hear you If you're brown, stick around But if you're black, oh brother Get back, get back, get back Now me and this man were working side by side This is what it meant They was paying him a dollar They paid me fifty cents They said, if you're white, you're all right Or if you're brown, stick around But if you're black, oh brother Get back, get back, get back Well, I went to this employment office And they was all in line They shouted out everybody's number But they never did call mine They said, if you're white, you're all right Or if you're brown, stick around But if you're black, oh brother Get back, get back, get back When a day of victory comes, I'll be there with my plow and my hoe. And St. Peter at that gate, what you gonna do about that old Jim Crow? You see, if you're white, you're all right. Or if you're brown, stick around. But if you're black, oh brother, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. Thank you. Uh, another wee bit of sad news tonight. Same with you. Uh, that's it in CinemaScope. <laughs> another bit of sad news tonight. I've just heard that Edward Heath's library has went on fire and his two books have been burned. And it's an awful shame because you only coloured in one of them. This is a wee Irish song for wee Irishmen. Irishmen are notoriously small people. You can tell us by the national anthem, Soldiers Are We. And <laughs> uh, you love the story about the Irishman arrives in Glasgow for the first time and he's found staring at the traffic lights. And the police says, what are you looking at, Paddy? He says, oh, these things are fantastic. What do you do? Like the accent. <laughs> what do you do? It's like, it's like two ducks flying over storm and government, and one says quack quack. So I'm going as quack as I can. And <laughs> anyway, the police said it's simple, Paddy. The green is for your Catholics to cross the road, your orange is for your orange men to cross the road, and your red is for your communists to cross the road. He said, Oh, that's fantastic. The police gets away and comes back about half an hour later, and there's the Irishman lying on the ground, roaring and laughing. He says, what are you laughing at, Paddy? So don't give these orange buggers much time to cross the road, do they? <laughs> and <laughs> and just to prove that I'm no biased, or just in case there's any 12 feet orangemen in the room, <laughs> you get a new priest starts in Glasgow, and he's ground about his diocese. Interesting word, that diocese, it's Latin. 
and discovered that doctors in Glasgow write writing prescriptions in Latin so that Protestants won't get better. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he sees this name in the door, Patrick Flaherty, taxi driver. And as you well know, Flaherty gets you nowhere. So, <laughs> he goes up. He says, tell me, Pat, you a good Catholic? He said, certainly, Farah. Parkhead of a Saturday to see the boys. He says, no, I don't mean that, buddy. What I mean is, do you follow your religion? He says, sure, 12th of July, I'm out the boys. <laughs> this is what you call a Mary Hill flick. <laughs> it's for punching wee blokes, no? So, he says, no, you've got me wrong. What I mean is, do you go to Mass? He says, oh, no, I'm not a fanatic. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> At this point, I usually crack football jokes, but my home team, St. Murn, and, uh, <laughs> and that's just a joke itself, right, yeah. St. Murn's only chance to get into Europe if there's another war, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. St. Murn hired a goalkeeper for this season, and he played the first trial for them yesterday, and he let in 24 goals. And he came out after the game and tried to commit suicide and threw himself in front of a bus, and it slipped under his fingers. <laughs> You get the wee Celtic supporter late for the game at Ibrox and he's in such a hurry he runs into the wrong end, you know. He's a wee wee small man. He's so small that when it snows he's got to jump up and down to make a footprint. And, <laughs> and when he takes a shower he's got to run about to get wet. And, <laughs> and he's got a job as a bouncer at mother care. And <laughs> Jake. Some of and uh, Oh, God bless you, because that's his job. <laughs> anyway, he runs into the wrong end, and he screeches to a halt with a sort of smoke coming off his sand shoes, going, <laughs> when he sees where he is, and he takes off his wee green and white rosette, and his wee sort of sacred heart, Truth Society badge, and, <laughs> and, and he sticks him in his pocket, he's going, but Celtic scored the first, uh, Rangers scored, or Celtic scored the first goal and he forgets where he is, he goes, Oh, come over the bottle, oh Jesus. <laughs> and two of them get round about him. You know the kind, the forehead about that size and the fingers trailing off the ground going, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, says, oh are you a wee Catholic? He says, aye. He says, go and get us a bovro. He says, okay, okay. He says, leave your shoe. So you're going to come back. He leaves his shoe and he comes back and his shoe's full of jobbies. <laughs> or Keek if you're Inverness. And he says, put it on. He goes, Pff. He goes, Pff. puts the shoe on. And his pal says, I want a bovro. He says, I'll get it, I'll get it. He says, leave, you, leave, leave. Leave your other shoe. <laughs> and he goes, oh no. And he comes back and he was wearing well and stay, you know, and he comes back. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he comes back and his, his other shoe's full of jobbies. <laughs> he says, put it on. He goes, oh. Puts it on. And he's standing there minging, going, poof. <laughs> oh, poo, you know. One of them says, what'd you get to the game? It is okay apart from people shitting in your shoes. <laughs> and other people pissing in other people's bovros. <laughs> Please join in. I know where I'm going. And I know who's going with me. Louder, let's hear you. I know who I love, but the deal knows who I'll marry. Feather beds, they're soft, and painted rooms are bonny, but I'll give up them all for my handsome, winsome Johnny. Come on, let's see. I know where I'm going. A wee bit louder. And I know who's going 
I know where he's going. I know who I love. But the jail knows who I'll marry. And last time, first when she came to the tune, they called her proud and saucy. But now they've changed her name. They call her the Lick Bob's Lassie. Come on, Lassie, last time. I know where I'm going. And I know who's going with me. I know who I love. But the deal knows who I'll marry. Thank you. I'd like to, I'd like to finish up this spot with a pluck. Uh, I've got a friend in Glasgow called, shh, got a friend in Glasgow called Freddie Anderson. He's a poet and playwright, very, very talented man, lovely man. And about two years ago, he wrote a play called Be Willy Winky. It was on at the Close Theatre in Glasgow, and it was obviously for the kids. But every character in this play, apart from Willy Winky, he's the only fictitious character in it. But every character in the play actually lived and existed in Glasgow. There were street characters in Glasgow, a Georgian times. And my I did some of the music for the play, and my favourite character in the play was a guy called Bob Dragon. His real name was Bob Draghorn, but they called him Bob Dragon because he was the ugliest man in Glasgow, also the richest. But um, he was so ugly that his mother had to pay his pals to play with him. <laughs> and he had a face like a wedding cake left out in the rain. And he had a wee summer job swimming up and down Loch Ness. And <laughs> this is his song, right? And I want you please to sing this one as, as, as loud as you can. I'll teach you the chorus first, right? Skinny malinky long legs, big banana feet That's what they sing as he walks along the street Eenty meenty halligalong, inky pinky pee Your wee legs are all squeegee That's the chorus, right? <laughs> on you go, I'll not say a word, honestly, on you say. Is it a job or a pee pee you need? <laughs> anyway <laughs> And Anyway, <laughs> anyway, shh. what we do, what we do with this song is I sing, I sing skinny malinky long legs, and you all sing big banana feet, then I sing, that's what we sing, and you sing as we walk along the street, I sing inti minti halaglum, you all sing inky pinky pee, then we all sing your wee legs are all squeegee, right? Skinny malinky long legs Big banana feet That's what we sing Ain't it mean to halligalong You're off here to say P, ain't you? <laughs> you can say number one if you want, I don't know <laughs> Who's, Somebody said poo up the back here yeah. <laughs> Wants me to change the last verse to your wee legs or ask would you Is it working? <laughs> Then we all sing, your wee legs are all squeegee. They just do a wee bit louder and we're away. Oh, they say that he's the ugliest man in Glasgow. When it rains, there's even puddles in his face. They say his nose is like a ripe tomato. But he's a member of the human race. Oh, skinny, malinky, long legs. That's what we sing. Ain'ty meenty halligalong Ain'ty meenty halligalong Your wee legs are all squeaky His right leg is okay, the other's shorter He had a lot of trouble with his legs His wife's name was Peggy, she had a wooden leg And... Well, it was a matter of opinion actually, but um... His daughter had two wooden legs it Must have been a peepee And... <laughs> His daughter had two wooden legs and this guy took her home from a dancing and he was kissing her up the back close and the poles come in and says, hey, what are you doing with that wheelbarrow? <laughs> and
and his, his uncle Archie had no arms and no legs at all. And he went to go to the fancy dress ball, so he stuck a pole up his bum and went as a lollipop. <laughs> and anyway. His right leg is okay, the other shorter. They say he's like a camel with a hump. On him, made pays the four guy. Well, where was that? Let me know, see, they're shorter. They say he's like a camel with a hump And I'll tell you something else I shouldn't utter But even his bohookies got the mumps Oh, skinny malinky long legs Can you hear you? That's what we sing Inti minty halligalum Your wee legs are all squeegee the nose upon his face, they say, is Roman. It roams across his face and down his chin. His breath is like a fish box in Salt Market. He had terrible breath. He went, oh, she's doctor, I've got bad breath. The doctor said, let me smell it. He goes, doctor, oh my God. I didn't like it. That's terrible. Go and take a spoonful of cow's jobbies every day. He says, let her help it. He says, no, but it'll tone it down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we one good eye, his other eye is blind. Come on, like she's singing. Oh, skinny malinky long legs. <laughs> That's what we sing. <laughs> we walk along the street. The inty meanty eh? long <laughs> Your wee legs are odd. And last time, really belt out. Oh, skinny malinky long legs Be a bit louder That's what we sing Inti minty holly galong All together Your we legs are a squeegee Thanks very much Uh, our next singer was in at the start of this club. Um, a young lady, I said. We, this thank, you, thank you for the young bit. <laughs> yeah. The club in October has been gone 15 years. <laughs> the same place. Hmm. Hi. <laughs> Told you I'd get you. Um, she left here and joined a fantastic group called the Three City Four. Leon Rossolson on up. With her is her husband. Those of you who read the folk review may have seen the marvellous pictures when she get married. The gentleman called Pete Shuttler from a fantastic group from Yetminster and Dorset called the Yetis. Yep. So, will you welcome please, Marion McKenzie and Pete Shuttler.
makes me feel so bloody old. <laughs> I mean, I like to... I'll not say what's broken now. <laughs> Been married for three years, see. Um, I was, when I first came here tonight, St Andrew's Folk Club, as I used to remember, it used to be a nice traditional club, you see. Used to all traditional singers, so I was going to sing a nice traditional song. Really sweet one with my husband accompanying me and his lovely accordion. But then I heard you lot. Well, I heard you lot while Danny was doing his first bit. And it seems to me you don't like these nice, sweet songs. You like uh, probably what you, Danny would call jobby songs. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't really a jobby song. It's just, um, it's a very sad song, actually. And it's got a chorus. And I want you to join in the chorus, you see, because... As you see, I'm singing without any accompaniment whatsoever. Except, well, <laughs> they don't make any noise, but... <clears throat> <laughs> I can't do without them. <laughs> I can't get rid of them. <laughs> anyway, I'd like you to join in the chorus, because I've got such a little voice, you see, that if you don't join in the chorus, I'm going to be all lost. Oh. Anyway, and it's very... It's, this song is about an old woman who's lived for 50 years in an old top flat in Dundee tune. All alone. Aww. And their only company has been her old Tom Cat. Poor old soul. Anyway, the chorus is 50 years in an old top. No, I think I'll take that down a bit in case I do myself a mischief. 50 years in an old top flat. The poor old woman and her old Tom Cat. <laughs> It wasn't as bad as all that, was it? <laughs> now that's the chorus. Would you all like to try it before I start singing? Fifty years in an old top flat, the poor old woman and her old Tom cat. You're marvellous. <coughs> what lovely singers. I knew I had to come back up to Scotland to hear singers like that. Well, if you didn't come back, I would have sent you back in. <laughs> oh, thank you. <coughs> in an attic room in Dundee Toon, an old woman put the tail around. She lived fifty years in an old top flat. <laughs> Remember my quiet little voice to join in the chorus, won't you? <laughs> nay, come nay, but the old tomcat. Fifty years in an old top flat. The poor old woman and her old tomcat. One night by the fire she felt guy glum. When what do you think came doon the lum? But our fairy godmother sang, Have no fear. They grant three wishes have sent me here. Fifty years in an old top flat, the poor old woman and her old tom cat. The woman looked down at her empty purse. I could always do with some cash, of course. The fairy godmother waved her wand a a line on the flare was a thousand poon. Fifty years in an old top flat, the poor old woman and her old tom cat. A lovely figure and a face divine, for tonight I wish those things were mine. The fairy godmother says, I'll hey, ah, go. <laughs> and she made her look like Biddy Bardo. Fifty years in an old top flat, the poor old woman and her old tom cat. This lovely lass by the fire she sat, she turned her attention to her old tom cat. He's my only friend, so here's my plan. For tonight make him a handsome man. Fifty years in an old top flat, the poor old woman and her old tom cat. This handsome man to the last drew near, and he softly whispered in her ear, The night is young, but you'll regret the day that you took me to the vet. <laughs> Fifty years in an old top flat, the poor old woman and her old tom cat. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Uh, well, since I haven't got the figure to do that sort of thing. I come from Dorset, you see, which is about as far south as you can go, and we got a very strange accent down there. <laughs> Not another person from Dorset. Pretty near. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> so what? A <coughs> oh yeah, that that, that 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 group, like the spinners. Yeah. So what I do? I play a tune that someone, a friend of mine, told me last year. He never played this tune when you go to Scotland because they're really fed up with it. They're really pissed off with the tune. But I'll play it anyway. Job it off. Job it off. Yes. Um, it's a, it's a quiet tune, actually. It's a tune called The Dark Island. Are you fed up with that tune? Thank <laughs> you. 
My favourite English group, and I've said over and over and over, and I embarrass people when I say this, is the Yetis. They do such fantastic stuff. And at the moment, we are talking about getting the Yetis up, the complete Yetis, to do a concert for us in October, we hope. Through that door, through the door of opportunity, <laughs> oh, hi, right. through the door of opportunity, every week <laughs> steps another idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Our idiot of the week will now step forward and he's going to do the raffle for you. First prize. It's a night out with Danny Kyle. What's the second prize? Second prize, two weeks with Danny Kyle. <laughs> and the third prize, a who's next door to Danny Kyle. <laughs> now, it's green. 81. <laughs> Danny! You will tell me, Danny, when I go off the strip. Yes. Uh -huh. <coughs> Our next singer, the guest of the evening, strong and virile. That's what you said, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Virile, yeah. And loves women. So, any of you loose women, loose, loose women, you want to have it? I like some tape, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to see Danny afterwards. I'm free tonight. Oh, aye. <laughs> the bloke just says he's free tonight, so if anybody is that way inclined, you can see him as well. Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome back, please. Danny Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could we have a view I took? We've had a police warning tonight. Shh. What was it in here? We've had a police warning tonight. Shh. The police have been in and have told us tonight that MD is drinking and driving. To remind you that every four minutes in Britain there's a man knocked down and he's getting pretty fed up with it. So. <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to sort of be a, uh, slightly parochial tonight because I've got some very, very dear friends of mine in from my hometown, Paisley. Hands up the Paisley people, give a shout for Paisley, right? Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had some ex-dear friends in the night there. Uh, <laughs> shh. Shh. So what I'd like to do is a song that I wrote myself. I was going through a very sort of bad patch in my life. I was working in a strip tease club in Soho. 40 pounds a week, that's all I could afford. And <laughs> during this period, if you'll pardon the expression, during this period of my life, I gave up sex and smoking and drinking, and it was worth 20 minutes of my life, believe me. So, <laughs> I decided I'd write this song. The song's about a paisley mill lassie's wedding, and uh, it's dedicated to my girlfriend, Marjorie Legs. <laughs> I call her that because it's spread easy. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, <laughs> she couldn't tell the difference anyway. <laughs> Till the start came. But uh <laughs> 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 
we go, right? I'll give you a shh, I'll give you a verbal description of a piece of my lassie. She's got a kind of purple balaclava. <laughs> A Wellington in one foot, a sand shoe in the other, and a bike over her shoulder. And uh, I use the word chanty in this song. It's not a jobby song, it's a traditional song. And, uh, <laughs> and I use the word chanty, in case you're not from this, uh, the, the sort of west of Scotland, the chanty is sort of po. <laughs> and you got a lovely story about the, the piece of mill last year runs into the fishmonger with a big gigantic chanty, said a pound of fillet, the blocks are a pound you don't. So, <laughs> Or, or the mill lassie from Paisley getting married and she leaves number five flat in the anchor mill and goes down to the registrar's office and he's taking down her particulars and he says, he's a spinster, she says, no, I'm a Hank Winder. He says, you're very ignorant. She says, I for one. <laughs> the chorus is very easy. Our molasses, we're molasses. We are the lassies that are working in the mill. That's the chorus. We're molasses, we're molasses. We are the lassies that are working in the mill, right? Our molasses, we're mill. We are lassies that are working in the mill. Terrific. If you can't sing a chorus, you give the ethnic love call <laughs> of the piece of mill lassie, which is. Ah! Okay! It was on a Friday night, there were lots of folk in sight and the punters were talking all about their luck when down through the high street came a bunch of yelling lassies Maggie was marrying big shock Our mill Sing! We are the lassies that are working in the mill Mill lassie is in a cooperative with her boyfriend and she says, Mr. Man have you got any monogrammed handkerchiefs with initial S? I'm afraid not, madam. She's come on, Shuey, we'll try somewhere else. <laughs> My Uncle Willie was very kind to sick animals. He actually never knew they were sick till he backed them. But, uh, he used to back horses each way in case they ran backwards. <laughs> and he woke up he woke up one morning at seven o'clock and it was his seventh son's seventh birthday and he saw this horse running called seventh heaven and a jockey weighed seven stone that was running at 70, 71 and he put seven pound on it and it came in seventh <laughs> and There was wee Jean free Glenburn and Jan free Gallahill and Big Bella free Fergus Lee had just about drank her full and Maggie's old auntie who'd been drumming on the chanty to jump out at Maggie and they'll mind you in my will our mill what? We are the lassies that are working in the mill I learned that bit off of a very famous classical Spanish guitarist called Segovia Carpet. <laughs> now Big Liz McPherson, a very snooty person, she lifted up her nose and said, Oh, indeed, but she was black affront it. When we made a grunt it, and lifted up the chanty and put it on her heat. Our molasses, we're mill. We are the lassies that are working in the mill. You get fed up traveling with various folk song clubs and means test socials and things you do for money. And every time they say, if it pays, they say, oh, pays a man, one of these mean, miserable, tight people. It's a kind of fallacy held by many. Uh, 
need to be noticed that one. Uh, it's a fallacy about, that, that, that gives a, about, about Paisley people being mean. It's not quite true, but there's one man in here tonight, I'm not going to mention his name, but it's Jake Cooper White, sitting right there. <laughs> he put on a black tie at Christmas and told his kids Santa was dead. I'm taking a fella here. <laughs> The only man in Paisley with a pad looking his dustbin. <laughs> he found a crutch in the road and went home and broke his wife's leg. <laughs> Tell you one thing about Paisley, people are very honest. I was once in a pub in Paisley and I walked out without my change. And the barman chapped in the window with a sponge. <laughs> and... You get a Paisley man that dropped ten pence off the top of the Empire State Building and it hit him in the head. <laughs> or... <laughs> and there was a Paisley man that started the Grand Canyon in America by dropping ten pence down a rabbit hole. <laughs> and, and a Paisley cure for seasickness is hanging over a boat with a ten pence piece between your teeth. <laughs> My Uncle Willie, my Uncle Willie was run over by a steamroller and he was up in Ward 9, 10, 11 and 12 in the hospital and, and I was up there visiting him and I was sitting there eating his grapes and this fella come charging through the hospital ward with his hospital nightgown he on with his hands between his legs shouting oh yeah, oh yeah, mommy, daddy, oh yeah, oh yeah, ouch and and the nurse was running after him saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and the matron, the matron was running after the nurse saying, you silly fool, I told you, prick his boil. <laughs> and he was in there, my Uncle Willie was in there with a severe case of diarrhea. He would drink anything and he actually never knew he had diarrhea until he went home and took his bicycle clips off. But, um, <laughs> And she says, look, Danny's Uncle Willie, if you promise not to make a mess of your bed, I'll give you five woodbine. <laughs> so he let that all the next day. <laughs> but a wee escaped. <laughs> <laughs> so he picked up, rolled into a ball and threw it in the next bed. <laughs> the nurse examined the bed, she said, that's very good, there's your five woodbine. He says to the guy in the next bed, you want a woodbine? The guy said, if I like your Maltesers, you can keep them. <laughs> so... <laughs> Maggie's face was painted black with an L sign on her back To the sign it didn't mean that Maggie couldn't drive The lassies all went home and they all said the same When it comes my turn I never will survive Last time let's hear it Our mull lassies were mull We are the lassies that are working in the mill Thank you I've had a couple of requests, but I'd rather sing a song. Uh, actually, I never do requests unless I'm asked. But uh, at this point, I would like to ask you for, for a wee bother. I'd like to do a couple of serious songs, you know? Non-jobby songs. <laughs> that depends on your mind, doesn't it? I worked in a Glasgow shipyard for four weeks and uh, I left because of ill health. They were sick of me. And, uh, <laughs> the song is dedicated to the, the finest bunch of fight men that came out of Glasgow in a lot of years. I'm talking about the UCS workers, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm working on deck of the great iron ship. Hell below zero, slung over the side. Riveters' guns play tattoos on the hull. We're the men that build ships on the Clyde. Where you're hammering, you're cocking, you're gouging and you're burning. Snow in your face and tired inside, the conditions are bad. Apprentice young fella, don't hang around. Get out with the tide. Look out down below, a hammer is falling. Beware, life cables lie on the wet decks. No smoking on board. Say your safety precautions. And flames from the burners, they blister your neck. Where you're hammering, you're cocking, you're gouging and you're burning. Snow in your face and tired inside, the conditions are bad. Apprentice young fella, don't hang around. Get out with the tide. Coated lady swings a bottle of champagne and breaks it against the iron ship side. The workers stand cheering, their conditions forgotten. With their caps in the air, it's their lunch and day pride. Where you're hammering, you're cocking, you're gouging and you're burning. Snow in your face. And tired inside, the conditions are bad. Apprentice young fella, but please hang around and fight from inside. Please hang around and fight from inside. Thank you. I'm not going to say a word. Mm. I've not seen a canary going to the toilet before. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, I've done a request for a wee lullaby. What? God, God bless you. One? You're joking. I'm going to do four. Right. Yeah. Um, the request for a wee lullaby. I think kids are tremendous people. I remember sitting on a train journey once and the carriage was absolutely stowed. And this guy came on with a wee lass, he should be about six or seven, sort of big blue eyes and blonde hair. And she says, she sat down, she says, Daddy, play with my hair. And he played with her hair. She says, no, no, the way you play with mum's hair. So he played with her hair again. And then she says, Daddy, give me a kiss. So he gave her a wee kiss on the cheek. She says, no, no, the way you kiss mum. So he kissed her on the lips. And she says, Daddy, whisper to me. And he went, and she says, no, the night my back's here. And <laughs> or you've got alternately, alternately you've got the wee boy about five and he says to he says to his mummy, he says, Mummy, Mummy, I'm gonna marry wee Maggie McBumferty for next door. And she says, I'm going to kid him on. She says, right, what are you going to do for money? He says, well, when I'm seven, I'm going to get a paper round. And we Maggie's going to get a milk round and we'll save up our pennies. She says, aye, but where are you going to stay? She says, well, I'm going to, we're going to stay in that wee, sort of wee shed that my father built me down at the bottom of the garden. She says, aye, but what are you going to do if the wee babies come? He says, well, we've been lucky up to now. So, <laughs> <laughs> And 
the song's called Kikaboo or the Shipyard Lullaby. Well, Kikaboo, my wee lassie, hiding behind the stair. Kikaboo, my wee lassie, daddy can see you there. Kikaboo, my wee lassie, hiding behind the stair. Kikaboo, my wee lassie, daddy can see you there. Now the shipyard horn has went the new, and daddy will soon be him. Hide yourself behind the door, and daddy will cry your name. Come on, let's hear it. Kikaboo, my wee lassie, hiding behind the stair. Kikaboo, my wee lassie, daddy can see you there. Wash your face and put on your gun, put all your toys away. After your daddy has had his tea, you and him can play. Come on, let's hear you. Kikaboo, my wee lassie, hiding behind the stair. Kikaboo, my wee lassie, daddy can see you there. No settle down in your cot, try and dream o' the moon. Settle down and close your eyes, the sandman is coming run. Kikaboo, my wee lassie, hiding behind the stair. Last year, last time. Kikaboo, my wee lassie. Daddy can see you there. Thank you. Uh, it seems to be folks at times ran out and the clock's beating us. Uh, <laughs> so we bought your cage. Eh? Hey, what are you saying, budgie? Anyway, hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, at this point, I would just like to say that I've heard another bit of sad news. I've heard that John Wayne has been thrown out of the American army <laughs> for missing that wee jap that's on that island. And, uh, <laughs> can you imagine that wee Japanese fella still fighting the war after 30 years? And they interviewed him, and the first question he asked was, is Celtic still tap the league? <laughs> And, anyway. uh, I'd like to finish up with a series of street songs from a series of streets. Uh, the reason that I sing all these street songs is that my family were brought up in a very poor part of Paisley. The house that they stayed in was so dirty that the mice wore boiler suits. And they never ever changed the wallpaper unless you had read it. And, 32 of them stayed in a wee single end. My grandmother had 30 children and she went to national assistance for home help and they sent her a shepherd and two dogs. <laughs> and <laughs> and they, sat, they sat in broken orange crates and drank a tea out of broken jelly jars. The only one pair of shoes between them. Not one of them could get a job. Then a depression set in. <laughs> and and my Uncle Willie went to claim means test money. He said, I'd like to claim means test money, Mr. Powell, please. And the means test man says, how much money do you have in the bank? He said, 76,000 pounds. The means test man says, stop kidding. He said, well, you started it. <laughs> he said, he said, you can't get means test money you were seen yesterday out selling firewood. He said, that wasn't me selling firewood, that was me flitting. <laughs> and, and because of this, I had a very unsettled childhood myself. I was born in a house because I wanted to be near my mother at the time. And just after I was born, the doctor thought I had six tongues. I had swallowed his rubber glove. 
And, and my mother says, what we call him? And my father says, don't call him, he might go away. <laughs> and I was left in that many doorsteps that I grew up thinking it was a bottle of milk. <laughs> and we're a very poor family. We're so poor we couldn't even afford laxatives. He used to sit me in the po and tell me ghost stories. <laughs> and, and, and up until the age of 16, I walked about the house naked. And at the age of 16, they bought me a bonnet. <laughs> Just so I could hang out the window and talk to the neighbours. And, We were so, my family was so poor that my brother had to be made in Hong Kong. And so if you know any of these songs, please join in. Who's got four legs, a tail and goes woof woof? Oh, oh you've heard it. <laughs> my Uncle Willie was a tremendous elephant poacher. My Uncle Willie used to poach elephants. My Uncle Willie was a desert rat during the war and I was very proud of him because he used to always say to me when he was drunk, Danny boy, it was your Uncle Willie that captured Rommel. And I was really proud of this until one day I got him sober and what he was actually saying was he had ruptured a camel. And, <laughs> and, and the sergeant... And the sergeant was showing my Uncle Willie how to do guard duty during the war. He says to my Uncle Willie, you stand at the gate, the, 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 the gate, and if anybody comes, you say, ha, ha, ha! Who could go, who could go, who could go, who could go? Who could go there, 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 for, for, for friend or for, for foe? And if he says for friend, you say, p -p 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 pass friend, and be recognised. And if he says foe, you sh sh shoot him. But take your time, it might be me. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway. I, the ghost of McLean, is marching again With Gallagher, Connolly and Maxton And their names ring out with pride as we march along the Clyde For the time now is ready for action So beware faceless men who destroy with the pen With your blood our hands we'll be soiling For although you think we're dead and the Clyde's no longer red then the city of Glasgow is boiling. You'd think you'd know by now that the way to milk a cow is to keep it cool, contented and placid. But they're a shower of Tory fools, for they've tried to milk a bull. Aye, and all though gets a bucket full of acid. So beware, faceless men who destroy with the pen. With your blood, our hands will be soiling. For although you think we're dead and the clay's no longer red, then the city of Glasgow is boiling. I, the ghost of Maclean, is marching again with Gallagher, Connolly, and Maxton. And their names ring out with pride as we march along the Clyde. For the time now is ready for action So beware faceless men who destroy with the pen With your blood our hands will be soiling For although you think we're dead and the clay's no longer red Then the city of Glasgow is boiling I'm no Harry Mary, I'm your mom I'm no Harry Mary, I'm your ma. I'm no Harry Mary, I'm your father's fairy. I'm no Harry Mary, I'm your ma. Ye can shove your granny off a bus. Can he hear you? Ye can shove your granny off a bus. Louder! 
Moje kany šovjer grani, farci žar mami z mami, je kany šovjer grani. For the last one, put your hands together, right? Let's keep, stamp your feet, right? Clap your hands. Take off your shoes and hum, right? I'm no hairy Mary, I'm your ma. Louder, let's hear it. I'm no hairy Mary, I'm your ma. I'm no hairy Mary, I'm your father's fairy. Let's hear last time. I'm no hairy Mary, I'm your ma. Thanks very much. Hold it, hold it! Hush! Silence! Silence! There you have it! Danny Kyle, Scotsman! Scotsman extraordinaire, Clyde Side Red, an honorary scout, believe it or not, of the 74th Perth Scout Troop. Dip, 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 dip to right. you. Quick. Uh, oh, oh, dip, 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 quick. Aye, right. Uh, I'd like to say thanks very much, obviously, because it's been a good night. Uh, I'd, li I'd just like. I thought I'd be watching our brownies. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank you very much. I'd like to finish up with a song that means a tremendous amount to me. I'd like to state quite clearly that my hometown's Paisley, I'm proud of it. Uh, right? I love... Uh, right? Like that. Ask his wife. <laughs> the songs and the stories I tell, I hope, sort of gives you an idea of the west of Scotland. I love Glasgow very much. Uh, the, whole, the whole west of Scotland. Uh, uh, what I've tried to do tonight is tell you a wee bit about us. This is the kind of people we are. I'd like to finish up with an American song. Written by an American, but it's international. It was written by a man called Woody Guthrie. Uh, concerns a group of people in the 1920s in America called the Wobblies, not the Wombles, the Wobblies, <laughs> who were a, a working class organization of people. They still, the, some of them still exist, but the folk music involvement here was uh, guys like Pete Seeger, Ramblin' Jack Elliott, uh, Woody Guthrie, God, how's that for name dropping? But, um, great people, and what they did with a self-chosen job was to go along, if they saw like the copper miners in Michigan were in trouble, they went along, wrote songs for them, did concerts for them, much the same as what happened during the UCS working uh, with the, the Glasgow and other folk singers. This was a, a theme song, I'd like you very, very much to sing it with me. It's called The Weary Hobo. Teach the chorus first. Go to sleep you weary hobo And let the town drift slowly by Can't you hear the steel rails humming And that's the hobo's lullaby Go to sleep you weary hobo let the town drift slowly by. Can't you hear the steel rails humming? That's a hobo lullaby. Let's try it, huh? So go to sleep, you weary hobo. Let the town drift slowly by. And let the town drift slowly by. Can't you hear the steel rails humming? Can you hear the steel rails humming? And that's the hobo's lullaby. And an old, your clothes, they're torn and ragged. And 
your hair it's turning gray but soon you'll be in a nice warm box car and free among the new moon hay so go to sleep you weary hobo and let the town drift slowly by can't you hear can you hear the steel rails humming and that the hobo's lullaby and an old them policemen they cause you trouble and they cause trouble everywhere but when you die and go to heaven then you find no police there. You heard about two Glasgow policemen walking down the road and one says to the other one, could you lend me ten cigarettes for a shop shop? <laughs> so go to sleep, you weary hobo. Come on, let's hear you. And let the town slowly by. Can you hear the steel rails humming? And that the hobo's lullaby. The last verse talks about a place in America called Peatskill. It could be anywhere, it could be Belfast, it could be all the trouble spots, Belfast or Cyprus or Glasgow Cross. And, uh, uh, Actually, what happened there was that the copper miners held a meeting, they were out in strike for better wages, and four guys went along to do a concert for them, and the police, or the, the state police, broke into the meeting and killed the guys, you know, killed the, the folk singers. It's not a sad song by any means, it's a be angry one. So be angry. So stand up, my brothers, and sing of freedom. And never you mind what's over yonder hill mm -hmm. Just stand up and sing your songs of freedom And never you mind about Pete's kill The last verse that you're going to sing yourselves and let's make some ghosts walk, eh? So go nice and quiet Can't you hear? That to Hobo Hullaby. And that. And last time as loud as you can. So go to sleep, you weary hobo. Let the town and let the town drift slowly by can't you hear can you hear the steel rails humming and that's the hobo's lullaby